Hey, it's all with your tips and reminders for this coming week in Warcraft. You can help support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing for more WoW coverage, and catching me live whenever I'm streaming. I want to kick off this video with a question for you folks who do both Mythic Keystone Dungeons and Raids. I'm curious to hear from you if you're finding keys to feel a little bit easier to do than the, I don't know, I, uh, the equivalent raid difficulty. You might have heard me in earlier guides that a stress-free and efficient way to gear up through keys is to run 9s through 11s, like grind them up until you have a full set of champion gear and the crests to almost fully upgrade them. That'll get you as geared as if you had the first half of the heroic raid on farm. Now, just speaking for me, but I've been finding 9s and 11s to be a lot easier to do, like a, a lot, a lot easier to do than the heroic raid, and I'm wondering what your guys' experience has been like. I might talk about this more in a separate video. Anywho, we're on week 3 of Season 3, which entails a few things, so let's go over that. The Revival Catalyst is getting its second charge, and those who have been both patient and unlucky should have a nice payout this week. I suggest using the same tactics as before. Check your Vault, if there's Tier, and maybe run through Raid Finder or higher, and then check your situation. Ideally, your goal is to use the Vault and the Catalyst at the last possible moment to achieve your 4-piece bonus. Settle for two-piece if necessary, and to not gamble. If you're watching this video soon enough, give yourself the best chance at gear by filling up the dungeon row of the Great Vault. You can fill the row with heroic dungeons if you're missing any spots, and the more chances of a good pick, the better. Speaking of that, Legion Time Walking is in play this week. If you're leveling, characters as low as level 45 can queue up for dungeons. Max level characters, this is your opportunity to get an easy chance at champion level gear once you complete 5 time walking dungeons and turn in the quest. Not just that, but they also count for the Great Vaults dungeon row, so hey, lots of gearing opportunities this week. In other events, arena skirmishes are on the menu as well as comp stomp. So okay, PvP might not be your thing, but comp stomp is technically PvE, and with super easy honor comes super easy transmog. The Season 3 World Content set has a PvP tint, and this is the easiest way to earn it. While we're on the subject of Transmog, this is the last week of November, meaning 1. You get a boost to help you complete your Traveler's Log faster, and 2. Dude, wrap things up for next month's trading post. Buy whatever you need, freeze your favorite thing, and look forward to a preview of the next month's trading post stuff as soon as it's available. This week, the third wing of Raid Finder opens up. There's only two bosses again, but let's take a look at the notable drops. There's this very neat Agility Fist weapon with a special effect, just keep in mind that this is unique equipped you can only put on one at a time. Casters get a cool staff with an on-use ability and a powerful trinket that's not unlike the Super Nuke trinkets from Seasons 1 and 2, except this is an int trinket, and this one also gives a big mastery buff. There's a tanking trinket that ought to feel pretty good in Mythic Plus, and there's also the traditional group trinket, looks like the more people who use this, the better. There's also two recipes for crafting reagents, and of course, tier tokens, and this week it's for the chest. Keep in mind that according to the schedule, the final wing of Raid Finder featuring T-Swift and Farrakh will come two weeks after this in case you wanted an excuse to sharpen your pitchforks. And over in Mythic Plus World, we can expect the affixes to be fortified, volcanic, and spiteful. I'm still only 99% sure of the schedule, just keeping an open mind here in case it happens to be different, but by next week we can be more confident about the pattern. Anyway, this combo ought to be quite easy to manage. Rains just need to keep a loose spread for Volcanic, and watch where you're running when Spitefuls start flying around. Meanwhile, for tanks, it's a vacation. Just sit back and observe and, and decide whether to help anyone or not. Coming out of this holiday weekend, we can expect some updates on the 10.2.5 PTR. I don't expect anything crazy to suddenly drop, but there is an interesting bit that was data mined the other week. It's a reference to an indie game called Vampire Survivors, which in a nutshell is endless waves coming at you and collecting overpowered abilities to mow everything down. Considering the Dreadlord looking costumes, I kind of have a feeling that a Dreadlord Survivor parody like thing is on its way, not unlike the Plants vs. Zombies minigame back in Cataclysm. So it's not going to be a game-changing OMG sort of feature, it's just going to be like this fun little ad. Meanwhile, last week there was a lot of chatter about rares after some recent and upcoming hotfixes. I'm going to put a spotlight on this conversation sometime during the week to see what sorts of conversations that we can have. And of course, you're invited. Stay on top of what comes out by subscribing to the channel. You can also catch me live for a chat, and hey, like this video too, that always helps. Have a great week, folks, good luck on your drops, and let's have Bob close us out. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Hey, love, it's a new month, come in.
join me. We're gonna do Pilates. Cause tender is my breakfast. Tender's what I breathe. Tender is the loot I collect from the corpses. Tender's running through my veins. Tender's both my pleasure and pain. It's like coffee. Tender's in my cup. Suddenly it's not cause I bought things. Check me on my badass broomstick mount. Got my tender, then your mama can count on. <laughs>